What would you tell them young fighters to do? Yeah, just stay in the gym. <laughs> Come on, hold on. Hold on. I'm wait, a- wait, wait, wait. Wait there, Mike McCullum. I've been <laughs> telling these kids. You can't do this fight and then three weeks, four weeks off. You have to stay yeah. in the gym. Simple. If, if you want to do it anyway, anyway, like real, the real way, you have to be in the gym. You got to be a gym rat. Dream it. <laughs> Some water just come out of my mouth. <laughs> Believe it. That's the passion. <laughs> Become it. We're back. Come on down. <laughs> don't make sure you don't spit in the mic. You know? nah, don't worry about me. You know what I mean? <laughs> the passion is my paycheck. I love that one. I love that one. <laughs> Let's start. We're starting the thing already. Make your passion your paycheck. Obviously, you know what I mean? like for me, we'd have to go speak to one of the greatest fighters of the last 50 years. Who's that? It's a lot of them, mate. No, nah, man. Mike McCullum is one of the oh. greatest. Yeah, Mike McCullum, man. We have to the body snatcher. Mike. The body snatcher. The original body snatcher. The Dungar gun. Yeah, I'm telling you. Man, I From the yard. To, I hit him down to the bodies, man. <laughs> like yeah, the body shots. A, it's an American twist, <laughs> twist with the yard, man. Yo, man, you know, we just have to throw the right tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Throw the right on downstairs and lick him upstairs with the left <laughs> left hook. You take your liberties. <laughs> but yeah, man, we gotta talk to we gotta talk to Mike McCullough. All right, all right. He's had a, he's had a fantastic. Get him on the career. black book. Get him on the John Wick. Come on, you no, know the Spencer Wick black book. You know how it goes. Joining us on the line right now. Oh my goodness, is. The Come body snatcher. On. Come the on. original. The ri- man, man talk about Ricky Hatton. This is yeah. the original uh, body puncher. This is the original <laughs> body puncher. Ricky Hatton is the body snatcher too? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah but is that the original? He's not the original. <laughs> oh, I mean, okay, okay. Yeah. Dylan White's not the Ricky original. Ricky's a bad boy Dylan, too, so that's all right. Dylan all right. White is not the original. <laughs> right. But the original yeah, is the guy we got on the line right now. And the who's former that? freeweight world champion went from light middle right. to middle to light heavyweight. Come on. Right, the one, yeah, the yeah. only, Mike, the body snatcher McCollum. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that Mike. Yeah, the round of applause. Yeah, meeting you guys again and talking to you guys. It's a, it's a, it's a wonderful feeling, man. Yes, nah, sir. man, you, you're, you're, you're the guy, Mike. You're the, you're the guy. Um, I remember Manuel Stewart was saying like the best technical, technical yes. boxer that he ever worked with. And this is Manny Stewart who worked with a concophony of of world champions, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. From out of the crunk yeah. said, Mike McCullum by yeah. far is head and shoulders above anyone that I've worked with. That's now, here is a man that worked with Tommy Hearns. Here is a man that has worked, let me tell you, like on a bad boy that he worked with, but people seem to forget, like he worked with Oscar De La Hoya. Yes. Here is a man that yeah. has, like, you just, um, Hill McKenty, um, uh, yeah. Go through the whole list, Milton McCory, who you fought and you Mitt beat. McCoy, yeah. You go through the whole yeah. list of guys that he has worked with, and he said, by far, mm. you are head and shoulders above any of those guys technically. Hold on, hold on, wait there. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that, boy? So, come on, like yeah, a soul that that. Now, come on, come on, tell them. We're going to wait one more time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. Forget about it. <laughs> That's so, true. Right. So it was it was the late great Bunny Grant who passed away last year. Who was the first Jamaican? Was it passed away last year? Yeah, he died last year, sir. He died last year. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, right. Oh but, my God! Right, but I remember speaking to him, and he was what, saying, "What killing me? Is he natural causes or what? Natural causes." Mm. He was saying, "Oh yeah, he, yeah." He was saying to me that um, when he was when he was training and that, and you were just an amateur, he'd always say, "Yeah, Carl from Mokola." What's the word together? Yeah. Wow, it's wow. always cool for you. How did you learn? Huh? The, how did you learn the body shots, uh, Mike? Yeah, body guard, man. You know, body guard was training me. We used to work. We used to spar together. Huh. And he tell he tell cool his trainer. I want him on the hand. <laughs> <laughs> you go ten if you go ten rounds or, or, or eight rounds. So you know, boxing that day. Seven, eight, ten, you know, go like eight, ten, nine, you know, kind of yes. in that region. And he always said, he always said to Kuro, I want Mike, I want Mike at the end. Mm. I'm keep saying, 
Why do you want me on the hand, man? You want to beat me up? Said, no, I want you on the hand, man. Yes, yes. When you come in the ring, you keep me sharp. So I, I can be alert with you because you're, yes. you're a hell of a fighter. Mm. Well, I, mean, I, I mean, the question I have to ask you, you know, yeah. um, I think it was, oh, it was, hold on, it was, let me see if I figure 1986, August. Uh huh. Julian Jackson comes into the ring oh. with Mike McCallum. Julian Jackson was 29 and 0. Wait a minute. He, he had his, his, his chest like was a, big. All, bro, bro. <laughs> well, wait, wait, wait. How did, like how, did, how did you survive getting stunned with that right hand in the first round? Man. <laughs> Listen to me. I went to the ring, right? Mm. I know this boy is a bad boy. Mm. But you know, you, I remember I was about I was on I, I was on the feed it also, yeah? Yes, yes, yes sir. Yeah, I had a lot of yeah, I had a lot of knockouts too. Mm. He was a real knockout artist. You know what I mean? Like a punch. He's a ridiculous puncher. Yeah, he was yeah, no, not like me. He was a real puncher. Yeah, he was I think he was twenty seven and all and he was twenty nine and all. So uh, you know, as you say, yeah. we both had you know, you had mostly all knockouts. Up until that yeah, point, but, so. But, but listen, I stopped most of my guys, you know, but he knocked them out like, bow, and it goes down and <laughs> like it. Yes, yes. You know, some two of my guys, I stopped them. I beat them up and the free stop the fight, you know. Mm. But he's, he's, he's almost a knockout, man. Boom, and it goes down. So, so. What was his plan? So I'm saying to myself, listen to this. Think to myself, all right, I'm gonna show you <laughs> <laughs> who's the real puncher. Yes, man. Oh, the way there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That what? 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 Hold on. Listen, like you think that it's just you one can punch? <laughs> no, because he, yeah, he, yeah, he, yeah, he, yeah. You, he, you, he hit you with a right hand that buckled your legs in the first yeah, round. Yeah, yeah. That was a serious yeah, shot. A serious. Man. That was a serious shot. You know. I could be the whole up, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I barely could hold up. Hit me so hard. I said, "Man, he played that game." Then I'm gonna go for my gun. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> but I was talking. Yeah, I had a gun. Whatever. Say. This yeah. man hit me like a like a mule kick. So would you, so would you so would you say that you know in your whole career, Julian Jackson was definitely the hardest puncher you ever faced? Uh, yes. Wow. Wow. This boy was a this boy was dangerous, man. Mm. And then and he's, you see how small he was. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes, yes. You know how big body, he got tiny body. This boy hit me the right hand, man. Boom! And my knees start going. <laughs> What's wrong with my leg? <laughs> my legs start going different ways. I'm saying, What's wrong with my legs? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I guess that's what you know. That's another thing that. Like, how would you say the conditioning aspect of the sport has changed? Do you think that the older fighters yes. were far more conditioned than all these yes. new fancy age running with gas marks no, and, and everything? Uh, you know, what, 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 what's, your, what's your view on the training uh, today versus the training of, say, when you was fighting? And do you think that the training m methods of yesteryear are far better than the ones today. Yeah, that's fine. And why do you say that? What, but, but, what, what but, makes it different? But then again, I'm, I'm going to tell you something now. You talk about Bonner Grant. Yes. Bonner Grant was a man that I used to watch in the gym. Mm. You know, you, you know, all of us, they watch me too when I, when I was fighting. The guy come after me was watching me and try to copy my training uh, style and all that stuff. Mm. But I was copying Bonner Grant. Percy Hayes used to train at the same time. But Bonnie Grant was a little different. A lot different. Mm. He works. He works a bag. And I watch the way he works a bag and I copy all of that. And, you know, put it with my, my style and make it nice. Yes. Shoot me. But Bonnie Grant was a genius when it comes to working and the bag and all that kind of stuff. So what was there? So, Go on, sir. Go ahead, what are you saying? No, sorry, I'm listening. I was about to ask a question. No, no, talk to me. Go ahead, what are you saying? No, no, no. I, I was just saying, so was there a lot of, was it a lot of bag work? Would you say it was a lot of bag work or was it more sparring? You know, how Bunny used to work? 
No, bun is a lot of bag work. So. Mm. And and the way he do it to the body, he box the bag, then he fight the bag, body shot. Sometimes double, triple left hooks and uppercuts and hooks and all that. Hook, uppercuts, hook, back with the hook, uppercuts, you know, he mix it up all the time. Both yes. hands. Yes. So I used to learn, I used to copy those things, you know, and mm. try to do it my way. You know, I try to, yeah, I'm copying Bunny and I'm trying to do the way Bunny do it, but I can't do it like Bunny. Bunny is his Bunny, you know, so I, I, I watch and try to do it like how he does it. Yes. But what what was, he, you, he worked like sometimes six, seven, eight rounds in the bag, but remember, you were a professional. Yes. I was an amateur at the time. I was trying to learn and all that. So, he do that, he do the up and down bag and he do the speed bag and he jump the rope and stuff and he do it gracefully, you know what I'm saying? I learn all of this, man, because I learn all of this. I put it in my little style and all that. I'm going to be a bad boy. <laughs> I'm talking myself, yeah? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because I, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm like you. Like I, I just believe that, you know, you can't get away from the, the nuts and bolts and uh, I just think that a lot of the training <sighs> nowadays is unnecessary. I think that you're getting away, yeah. they're getting away from the real boxing, the art of the sport. No. I'm going to tell you something better than that. When I come to America now, right? Yes. And I'm working like that. People looking at me, I want to, like, they, 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 they're amazed, they laugh. They, 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 they know, oh, you work that back for good. They don't say it, but you can see it in the face, you know? Yes. I, I oh, you work like that. But I'm thinking of Bonnie Grant. <laughs> <laughs> that's how buddy that used to work and I'm doing stuff he used to do because over time I started to get better at it because I sit, down, sit back down and watch him work the bag man watch him train man and I do just like he does okay I do so much that I get so, I get good like well not like him but I get, I get good you know what I'm saying yes but he's still a master now we started to train together because he used to have fights professional fight and he always talked to Kuro like I said Kuro I need this guy I need that guy but I call him on the hand mm. I'm saying why am I on the hand all the time all the time I twerk he said I call him on the hand Kuro I call him on the hand so I go to Bunny and I said to Bunny why y'all don't want me on the hand he said you laugh and say, ha ha. So why are you laughing? Tell me what I'm in He said, all right, I'm going to tell you, son. You're a younger. You're, you're, I was a young man, you know what I mean? Yes. You were 16, 17. Mm. He said, you got good reflexes and you got quick, good speed with the jab. When I run all them rounds and get a little tired, I want you to come with a quick jab on the end because if I don't get away from that, I'm going to get beat up. I get hit. So you kept him sharp? Yes. That's so, what you're telling me. So I said, well, okay. So when that we spin and we look at your career, Mike, yeah, <coughs> there is, um, back then, we never had like no internet or things like that. For me to get the results was, was um, Teletext or <laughs> yeah, teletext. when it unboxing, I had to go to the bookie shops. I'd have to walk into the bookies. Are you? Yes. They let me in just for me to get the boxing results. They let me come in there and find the boxing results. Okay. So what stands out to me is October 19th, 1984. Come on. Sean Mannion. You don't even look at that box trick. Come on, man. <laughs> when you become the first Jamaican to become a world champion. Come on, round of applause. You win the WBA title, which was vacated by um, Roberto Duran because yeah, you, Duran. They, did a, they did a, me. yeah, I know, I know. You was meant to fight Roberto Duran and Emmanuel Stewart, who was your manager and trainer at the time, put Tommy Hearns in, put who was yeah. a WBC champion who won the title from Wilfred Benitez. He put him in for the yeah. title shot. Okay. So as he put right. him in for the title shot, Mike McCollum said, Chow, I'm gone. And he went to Lou Duva. How right. much, how much did, because like Manuel Stewart at that time was kind of like a father figure to you. How much did that hurt you that Manuel Stewart didn't put man, you in for the title? Man. Mm. Well, yeah, you tell, listen, listen, listen. And he tell me he couldn't do that. I don't understand that. I get some money and step aside. I step get some money and then go fight the winner. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Because he went over to Duran telling me the manager, Matt Duran, and me 
I after me and me and he wanted to fight. So I said, no, he's fight because he's number one manager. No, I step aside and make him go on and he went on a camera type of type and all that stuff. Mm. And then tell me, man, I don't want to fight you. Yeah, because you give me a man camera sirens, so how are you going to fight me? Yeah, you want to put him camera sirens with bigger pay there and all that shit. So you, you know what I mean? Well, at the time, Tommy was a bigger name than you were. But I just feel yeah, like, oh, fair. yeah, exactly. Man, so he, yeah. yeah, exactly. And it was a big, it was a big fight between Roberto Duran and Tommy Hearns. But regardless yeah. of that, you earned your right because you were, one, you were number one contender. And it was like For more than a year, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I had him hanging there. I've been there, yeah. yeah, more than a year waiting for this type of shot, man. Mm. And this man come tell tell the man to fight Tommy. Then of course it's more money, and then it's a bigger fight. Mm. So how did it feel when so you became world? How that. did it feel? How did it feel when you won a world title? Oh man, it relief. The release, man, I was saying, woo, I won the title. Mm. I don't care how I do, you know, I won the title, so it's good. Yeah, it wasn't an easy it fight. great, man. Sean Sh- Manning was a tough, tough man, though. Seriously, you want to see yeah, tough, 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 tough man? Tough. He was a tough yes. brother, man. Mm. Differently tough guy. Yeah, rugged guy, too. So you win a world title, yeah. then you end up fighting one of Manny's fighters. In oh, was it Braxton? <laughs> Braxton, yep, that's right. Come and Braxton on. used to think he was yeah, Michael Jackson. Braxton. That's a wet look. <laughs> yeah, he used to think he was Michael Jackson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Braxton used to beat me up in the gym, man. Well, Braxton used to beat you up in the gym. Yeah, man. For wow. real? Well, it never looked like that man. in the fight, boy. <laughs> Fighting is different Listen, from the gym. The man used to come in the gym, right? Why well, he used to pressure me, right? And make it move and all the time, be throwing punches and crazy. The man hit the body to the head and all that kind of stuff. The <laughs> thing I can shape and I'm saying it was completely to work out and it body to the head or and we have some we have some good work. Sometimes I get a beat up, the man beat me up. You know, we go back and forth. Mm. But it was rough it was good work. Hard work. Good hard work. Okay. But you beat him up and I to myself, you beat him up bad. Yeah. A fight I wanted yeah, to and I said to myself. A fight I wanted to talk about was the Donald Curry fight. Mm. That was a Oh, great. Donald Curry. That's, that's one of the greatest knockouts of all time. The you know, KO. Oh, that's, oh. A, that's yeah. what you call a KO. Yeah. Right uppercut to the but body, look, left hook to the head. That was a bad boy, man. <laughs> yeah, Donald Curry was a bad boy as well, right? Oh man. That was a dangerous man, man. He what would you as well? I, I see where they call him the cobra. <laughs> mm. Was Conan? He stay right there looking at you like the snakes. I'd make a movie. Go sit. <laughs> they watch you, right? <laughs> hey, come on! As you make that movie, ha, stop. You know what I mean? Man, hit me, jab in right hand, and hit me. Jab. I said, "What? <laughs> Why don't hit me like that before?" Yeah, yeah. No, I never get hit like that before. Like that, so hit my back. I'm clean shots. I'm saying, wait a minute. No, nah, man, something's wrong, man. <laughs> You're not moving your head, Mike. <laughs> come on. <laughs> uh, this is priceless. Listen, man. Mm. Uh, come on. Come uh, on. This uh, is priceless uh, information. The, the, we're way, getting here. the way you finished him with that, you tricked him with a shot. You went down to the body <laughs> with the right uppercut. Looping the foot. The left foot. Right, look, look the, the week week of the fight, right? Mm. Week before the fight. No, I know the week of the fight because like it's it's Saturday night, so Monday, right? We're doing all that like, training in the gym, man. Georgie Ben said to me, "That Curry, he, he's cunning." I said, "What? He's cunning and slick, and and what 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 is dangerous about him? He, he, he reacts to everything." Mm. And he reacts good, you know what I mean? Like he slipped right hand over the top, all that kind of stuff. He's good like that. I said, and how I beat him? So you got to slip the jab over here. And when you're slipping the jab over here, you hit him with the right uppercut. When you come with the, the, the right hand, because he said the jab over the side, the right hand coming to the side, you slip it. I'd have to show you. Slip it with the right uppercut to the body and then throw the hook on top. <laughs> and work on that shot for that week. Wow. And that's the shot that Joe got you the victory. Shot. Yeah, man. That shot, man. That shot, man. Maybe a big time fighter, man. Excellent. A million dollar shot. 
Then you move up in weight. Yes. Right? You were unsuccessful in the first yeah. fight against Sambu Kalambe. But I remember, because I've spoken to you about this many a times. I know, like, mm. you, you suffer from jet lag. You come in, like, a couple of days before yeah. the fight. Ignorant yard. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 You never know what's going on. That's very yeah. bad. Yeah. So, up. yeah, you came in a couple of days. And then, after that, Sambu Kalambe goes to fight unification with Michael Nunn. He gets stripped of his WBA yeah. title. Michael Nunn knocks him out in one round. The title is now vacant. And we have a really good fighter over here in the UK who was European champion at the time, British and European champion in Errol Christie. Sorry, Errol Christie. Harold Graham. Harold Graham. Harold Bomber, Graham. Harold Bomber Graham, who's most probably Britain's greatest fighter never to never win a title. Never to win a title, yes. And it's just a sad thing that he had to run into Mike McCullum that night hey. because that was... That was a hard, drawn-out battle. Beat down. There was a beat down that you gave him, man. What's your thoughts, on, Her- what's your thoughts on, no, on Harold Graham? What's your thoughts on Harold Graham? We fought, did we? Yeah, Harold Graham. Harold Bomber Graham, the English shoot. Oh, Bomber Graham. Yeah, yeah. yeah man. Bomber Graham is sick, man. Bomber slick like hell, man. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Bomber, give me the... Give me the air and take it back. I stick out the tongue out and then I said, man, I'm going to knock this guy's tongue out. <laughs> 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 Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah. Give me take it back and all the way. I grab and slip and give him tongue. I said, what? That's <laughs> 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 all you got? Yeah. All right. <laughs> all this. I'm going to get close to the beat to the body. So I started hit my, 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 Mr. Ford said to me, you have to hit him to the body, man. Yeah. Slow it down. Because then, the then, then, then you was working with the great Eddie Futch. People don't understand that. Yeah. You was working with Eddie Futch at that fact, time. Uh, there, you know? Serious. Yeah. And I said to him, I'm going to beat this boy. I got him. Put him in the hotel. And you can't touch him, man. He's quick. Mm. That's what he laughed and said, yeah, I know he's quick and he's quick. But you stay close to him and him to the body. Yeah. And every round, you still keep him in the body. Come on, this kind of thing. You're doing it just right. Keep him to the body. And when it comes to six, seven, ten, eight round, I'm going to start to get to my, my speed level, you know what I mean? Mm. <laughs> yeah, you slow him up. All that quickness, that was the, yeah, that was a quick one. And I started touching the jab and all that, you know what I mean? And then, I think that's what went in the fight, really. Then you, I was able to slip that. Then you fight, because I'm going through all, all the British fighters that, that you fought, even though it's Irish British, but then you fought Steve Collins. Steve Collins. Steve Collins. Steve Collins. Mm-hmm. A tough, yeah. tough, tough fight for you. That was a hard night. Well, it was a rough night. But I hit him to the body too again. <laughs> I boxed him again. You see, you got to slow these young boys down, man. Yeah. Remember, you know, I'm yes. an old man. Yes. I can't to them. So I have to get with them. So if I, if I, if I don't touch him to the body, I can get them slow. You know what I mean? I'm one guy leave him, man. <laughs> Mike, what you know was I mean? you know what was fascinating to me? Cause, you know, in a sixteen-year career, having tremendous fights, three uh, with James Tony, which most notably what, stands out for yeah, me. The first fight with the James first Tony fight with is James the, Tony. Is James Tony. James Tony. When he, when I was down at Sky, and he was on the show with me. Yes. Said that Mike McCullum taught him boxing. You see that? James Tony said that to me. Mm. Period. Yeah, yeah. He told me that too, but I know that. Yes, sir. Because after, after I deal with him, I go back and study. Mm. I can go, I can go, go do exam. I can go do exam on me, you know, and study. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. But, you know, as I was saying, you know, in that in this illustrious uh, career that spans 16 years, you've never been stopped. Mm. And uh, that's, a tes- no. that's a testament, testimony yeah, yeah. to the... On your feet, feet once. To the skills. You know, you fought Ray yeah. Jones. And... Uh, yeah. Even then, I was saying, oh, this guy is a, is a, is a, because you know, you, you, you know, you, old man then. Yeah, old man, yeah. I was old, yeah, old man then, yeah. And if I was young, man, he wouldn't fight me young. Mm. Do everything that fight me young, you don't see that. Yes. yes. I try to get him young, young, and turn on, not fight me. Okay, okay. I'm so, get old, I'm saying, ain't fight me. So if you had any advice to give any young fighters coming yeah, out right now, question. what would you tell them to do? What would you tell them to do, Mike? If I come again, I didn't get advice a for any young fighters coming up. Mm-hmm. What would you tell them, young fighters, to do? You have to stay in the gym. 
Come on, hold on. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Wait there, Mike McCullum. I've been telling these kids. You can't do this fight and then three weeks, four weeks off. You have to stay in the gym. Simple. If you want to do it anyway, anyway, like real, the real way, you have to be in the gym. You got to be a gym rat. Love that. Love that. Love that. Come on, more advice. You know, you're going to gym up the gym, do the karat, run around. <laughs> yes, man. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, so you have to stay you in the gym. gym right? Anything else? Yes. Anything else? Give us some, some more. You, you have to love the trade. Stay in the gym and train every day. Not, well, not every day. You on train on Sundays, yeah? Yes. I used to train Monday to Saturday. Monday to Saturday. How well, many times? Sorry, team. sorry to cut you there. Did you train twice a day or once a day? Or twice, times? man. Twice. In ter- when you say twice. Sometimes three. So, okay. So run in the morning. Yes, that's what I wanted to know. Run in the morning. And train in the afternoon. Train in the mm-hmm. afternoon. Train in the afternoon. Yes. And sometimes I go back into the gym, the L gym, and do some, you know, workout again there. Sometimes mm-hmm. when I want to fight, like championship fights and all that. Yes. Yes. When I got big fights, I train three times a day, man. Wow. Fantastic advice. Fantastic advice. I mean, so when we're looking at for your career, we had the mm-hmm. Fab Four with Hagler, Leonard, Hearns, and Duran. You were the fifth one, so you could have been like the fifth star. You never got none of those kind of fights with those guys, right? No, I don't want to. Listen, I used to beat up Tommy in the gym, man. Seen that spa? Have you seen the spa? I the spa? speak of Tommy in the gym. Have you seen the spa with Mike McCullum and Tommy Hearns sparring? It's no. on YouTube for the young guys. It's on guys. YouTube. Yeah, it's on I'm YouTube. gonna watch that. Right now, it's a regular thing because I remember there's a time um, after you beat um, Braxton, you went to no after you beat Mort McCory, you went to Emmanuel Stewart and said, "Yeah, I want Tommy next," and he said, "Yeah," and he gave you yeah. a picture of Tommy Hearns and said, "That's the only Tommy that you're yeah. gonna get." Wow! Wow! Yeah. So would you say? I mean, Go on, go on. Go uh, no, I was, no, I, ahead, I, I, go I was gonna, I was gonna say. So, would you say that Manny definitely protected Tommy from you? One hundred percent. I used to beat up Thomas Hearns in the gym, man. It's fine. Mm. One day, the time he will have made down man and, and shake him head. <laughs> and from that day, we never spar again. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, press the button. <laughs> I'm saying, why, why are you shaking your head, man? I'm just dropping my head and shaking my head. So I can tell you, man, I swear to And I can't beat him up, man. I don't care what I try. I'm trying all different to move and all that. I'm coming different. And I start hitting to the body and hitting to the head, man. And both hands to the body to the head. And I'm dropping my head, man. I'm standing on the car and I'm dropping my head. I'm shaking my head. Okay. Mm. And I look at him and say, well, you all right, man? And he just look at me. And I realize that, you know what? What happened after that? We don't spar again. Mm. We didn't spar again. What, 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 what I would say, what, what, how did um, Tommy's power compare to Julian Jackson? No, man. Nobody <laughs> trust. Nobody, nobody, nobody. No, nobody trust Julian Jackson. Wow. <laughs> Tommy got good right hand. Yes. Ah, the right hand. But Julia hit with both hands, man. And your neck, man. <laughs> you need a buckle. Mm. <laughs> Julia Jackson? No, oh, man. That's a deadly man, man. He's dangerous. Mm. Legal weapon, man. The man, they, the man, they punch so hard, man, to get it, man. And he's not you, though. Yes. That's what makes him too dangerous. Yes. He punch you. Put a buff and look for you. Style up and look for you, like. I mean, I dropped. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna tell you something. This has been one of the most entertaining <laughs> shows we've done so far. Because you, you just keep it. Well, you know, when you call me, you have to make sure that you're ready for me. You know what I mean? And you have to make sure that. Because I'm going to tell you how it goes. Just yes. like it was. Yes. And that's why this, this is called The Fight is Right. And it's, uh, as, a, as we're talking, we're watching I, your spa, I'm we're watching your spa, and I just see the triple jab and then a right yeah. hand to the body. <laughs> Straight. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. yeah. Then they do, man. They do different things from the other people, man. Yeah. You are you are definite, definite, definite legend. Of you know why the one that run run out of the place like why I can not say to him, say, when are you going to fight me, man? Mm. I mean, yeah, you. I mean, you. 
<laughs> so it's official. Mike McCallum was the most avoided man in boxing at that time. Of course he was, and the most underrated. And it's only now that we're looking back and we have to. Him and Kamachor over beat me up. Mm. And Kamachor can't beat me up. That gym and try all the things that him can't beat me. I'm shaking my head. I should say to you, my girl, oh, I can't do it. Look at that. Look at that work inside. Jesus oh, Christ. I'm just looking at your body work inside with Tommy Ernst. Yeah. And then you, you lick him with about four or five to the body, then through the right uppercut left hook and then spin out. Beautiful boxing. See, these guys don't know. Tommy, boxing. listen, man. I'm telling you, we're going to, one day we're going to work. I'm telling you, you're going to be in the corner because knowledge is power. And I believe that, you know, someone with your knowledge and experience has a tremendous amount of stuff to give back to boxing you know um oh yeah and i, 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 I like that, you know I, I definitely you know i don't like to talk talk things too soon but you know i believe that we will meet somewhere down the line 100 percent. and um I, i'm bringing you in and on that yeah. note mike the body snatcher mccallum it has been an absolute pleasure to have you live where are you now vegas or what yeah you in Vegas? Vegas. Live from yeah, Las Vegas. Mike, the body snatcher, McCallum. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Love you. I'm going to phone you later. What a fantastic man. Trust me. You know what I mean? And he breaks down things so, so, like, he ain't got a care in the world. He just, he just tells the thing. truth. He just tells the truth. You know I mean? beat up Tommy Aaron. <laughs> so beat up Tommy. <laughs> Tommy. <laughs> But he's real and, you know, the the highlight of the interview or the uh, or the, the red flag for me. You have to be a gym rat. <laughs> you got to be a gym rat. You got to be a gym rat. You know, the little rat. <laughs> thing. <laughs> you know, the little thing them that run on the floor. <laughs> Bro, you rat, you little rat. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, he, he just, and uh, to me, it's never been complicated. You know, they say boxing is the hardest sport in the world. Well, then you're not going to really get that far taking it and approaching it like a part-timer. you got to live this thing. And uh, that goes to my fighters and any fighters, you know. Yeah. Knowledge is there for everybody. I mean, we live in an internet age now. It's, all these things are readily available. It's just not as though I'm coming up with some secret manual to training. Uh but it's just whatever it is, you put back what you get back what you put in, you re put your soul. I say it all the time. Simple as that. There's no abracadabra to it. Mm -mm. Right? There's no abracadabra to it. You want something, no go grow for it. Jam. Right. You just got to grow for it. Um, simple as that. And then, was it? That you, was interesting, though, what he said that um, who, uh, when I asked him who was the harder puncher, Tommy Hearns or Julian Jackson, he said, come on, man. <laughs> Listen. Julian Jackson. Julian Jackson is a ridiculous puncher. All you got to do is look at Julian Jackson's fight when he fights Harold Graham. Oh. Right? It's, that's horrid. Oh, flattened. Yeah, horrid, horrid, horrid knockout. And Graham was doing so well. He was doing excellent, um, Graham was doing. Graham was doing excellent in that fight. Yeah. And then, you know what I mean? One slip of concentration. Yeah, because that's all it takes. And that's kind of like, like Deontay Wilder. He seems yeah. to have that same thing. Yeah, he does. Because that's looking out. The way he throws the left hook, and it's like a slap, but you can see the effect that it has on fighters, you know? And I, I realised that the first knockdown of Fury was the uppercut, innit? it? Yeah, it's the uppercut. Yeah, it's the uppercut, and he put him over. It's serious. The guy, and he, he remember... Well, he, you were ringside for it. Yeah, I was ringside, but, you know, the angles, and and then uh, I realised he, he, he knocked down um, Ortiz. He knocked down Ortiz with the uppercut. So this guy, any angle is dangerous. And any hand. And any hand. Jeez. So, yeah. Mike McCallum, great guy. Veteran in the game. Wealth of knowledge and experience. Yeah. Which you can't buy, you can't. borrow, or pretend to have. Seriously. If anyone want to learn boxing, just watch the first James Tony mike McCallum fight, which was at 1991. Go and watch that. I think it was October, right? That was a draw, right? <laughs> it was a draw. Mm. I mean, I thought Mike McCallum won the fight. But regardless of that, it's an excellent, excellent fight. A lot of these, that's the great thing about this show, Spence. A lot of these, a lot of these kind of like refreshers for me, you know, because fights I've watched. Um, and when I go back and revisit the, these shows we have, 
it makes me go back and watch these old fights. I'm telling you. Because they're, the, the, they're the nuts and bolts. Of, yeah, of, 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 course, of course they are. But um, Mike McCullum stylistically was just a very, very superb fighter. Um, and he, he was a boxer puncher. But when he was a light middleweight, he was an out and out puncher. Most of his guys, right at the top team fighting for the world title, were knockouts. He was just mm. knockout guys. But it wasn't like, as he said himself, like he didn't like clap them and knock them out. It would bust them up, drop <laughs> yeah. them, right? It would, it would, like, you, yeah, you yeah, your yeah, beat yeah. down, right? Yeah. But when you talk about Julian Jackson, Julian Jackson would touch you. And, and gone. you're gone. I mean, go. And, and Where does that power come from? You know what? I, I don't know, you know, because there's a couple guys who kind of possess that kind of magic kind of punching power. Right mm. um, on these shows, Wayne Alexander. Oh, Wayne Alexander had that punching power. We can't turn around and say he never. Wayne Alexander, like his knockout of Takalu. Oh, I, I was there. For that. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah, there because yeah, yeah. David Hay fought the same night, innit? Yeah, David Hay fought Carl Thompson. Hey, and he lost. We should have got Carl Thompson on the phone, you know. But yeah, I mean, maybe we could save him. For yeah, that's a good one. Year. Good we guess. Get, yeah, New yeah, Year. Yeah, we got to say Carl. Carl will have some gems. But yeah, that's ridiculous punching power. Oh, and Wayne has such a weird style. It looked like he was getting touched up to the body. But when you go back and watch the tape, he was just waiting for that shot. Yeah, I know, to throw that left hook. Vicious puncher. So we look at, like, if you look at, like, we look at vicious punches. Like, Nigel Ben was a vicious puncher. Mm. Right? I remember when Nigel Ben first came out and, like, uh, and it seemed like every week he was on, he was on, what was it, Seconds Out, promoted by Frank Warren. He was managed then by Burt McCarthy. And Nigel Ben used to just clap out guys, man. Mm. It was just ridiculous. But as you start to go f higher up, yeah, you're not like the punch power evaporates, but guys are more cute than to tuck up. Not to tuck up right Just shots. like when, when Wayne Alexander fought Harry Simon, if Harry yeah. Simon was anyone else, he would knock him out. Yeah, yeah, for sure. He got knocked out, but it was because it's Harry Simon. And he had that wealth of experience and knew what to do. You used to train Harry. I you? trained Harry yeah, and train great Harry. experience for me. He actually yeah. credited me. He said, other than his first main coach, he believed I was the best coach he oh, ever trained. Nice. That's wicked. That was high praise for me. You just come in the game, in the game just come in the game yeah. and you know coming from that and things like that motivated me so I always try to motivate trainers young trainers in the game and want to you know realise that I always tell them that it's not a journey it's a process simple as that it's not a journey it's a process right so I don't think you're going to just come in this and you're up there already you got to exactly. go through the process exactly. I've had a lot of knocks in this game but I realised I always took it as the process right uh, to get Just like it. the famous saying says that um, <sighs> happiness is not a destination, it's a journey. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing with life and boxing. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, Spencer. The master, knowledge. We're trying out here, B. We're trying. Happy New Year. Yeah. And I want everyone to have a happy New Year. You know, like I said already, 2020 means what, Tun? 2020 vision. Do not let a blind man proofread your 2020 vision period because they can't even read the bro dream it believe it become it and i'm gonna wait dream it believe it <laughs> remix become it <laughs> yes sir come on down let's have a great new year this is the year to be happy to be merry to be prosperous it's gonna be a good one and, and what a way to start the new year off with the body snatcher. Simple as that. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the Stamina for Soul YouTube channel.